In this tutorial, we're going to go through the process of laying out a MIM capacitor in MAGIC and extracting it and um, doing the corresponding uh, thing in the schematic and X scheme. And um, we're going to try to do LVS on it. So um, let's get into it. So maybe the first thing to do is to uh, pull up the um, Skywater PDK documentation and just look at the stack up and remind ourselves the layer stack up is here in the uh, Skywater 130 PDK documentation at readthedocs.io and uh, what we're talking about here when we're talking about a MIM capacitor is a capacitor that's formed between metal 3 and this cap M layer which in magic is called uh, MIM cap M-I-M stands for metal insulator metal and um, there's a second MIM cap, which is called MIM cap 2, which is an extra layer between metal 4 and metal 5, called cap M2 here in this stack of diagram. And so um, both of these MIM capacitors uh, have about the same capacitance per unit area. Uh, the nominal value is 2 femtofarads per square micron. So uh, one can use either one of these things. Um, you can also stack them together uh, on top of each other to get roughly uh, 0.4, I'm sorry, 4 femtofarads per square micron. Um, <coughs> if you're not going to stack them on top of each other, I think um, I would prefer to use um, the MIMCAP rather than MIMCAP2 because using MIMCAP2 is going to require going up to metal 5. And although you're further away from the substrate, and so you have a reduced parasitic capacitance to substrate between metal 4 and substrate than you do from metal 3 to substrate, um, involving metal 5 is going to involve some very, very um, large design rules. And so um, if you can avoid having to deal with making contacts like VIA4 and uh, the contact to the MIMCAP2 layer is uh, called MIMCAP2 contact. Um, if you can avoid that, that's probably not a bad thing. Um, the design rules are quite a bit smaller for dealing with um, MIMCAP contact and uh, VIA3. Uh, and so um, that's, that's the stack up diagram. So we are going to go into documents, MIMCAP2, and we are going to start by firing up magic. And we've got to set up some things here. So we're going to set the grid 0 0.05 microns. Turn the grid off, snap, user, there we go. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box here that is one micron by one micron. Okay, this is one micron by one micron. And that happens to be the minimum size uh, of the MIMCAP layer. The minimum width is one micron for the MIMCAP layer, so that means we can basically draw a one micron by one micron uh, box. And what we're gonna do to begin with is draw sort of a minimum size uh, MIM capacitor and um, extract it and see what it extracts as. So the MIM cap layer is down here. So here is MIM cap and this is MIM cap contact. So if we like we can paint MIM cap. You can see I've got some design rule violations and that's because there's a certain surround 
minimum surround by metal 3, which is 3 grid units. And so we will draw our bottom plate. Metal 3. Okay, and now we're going to put a contact, and so the minimum surround of the contact is 2, so the minimum surround of the mim cap contact by mim cap is 2, so there's 2, and the minimum size is uh, 7. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. MCAP C is an abbreviation for MCAP contact. And we can draw metal 4 line that comes in here. We have to surround the mim cap contact by one. And let's suppose that's my lead into the bottom plate in metal three. And I'm going to put a label on this, so we're going to call this top label top um, south and metal four. And label bot south and metal three. Let's just make sure we got the labels in there. Top and bot. Okay. All right. So this should be um, a two femtofarad capacitor nominally. And um, let's do extract. And let's actually let's uh, save memcap two extract and let's do x two spice um, x two spice scale off x two spice. And let's see what we got in the net list. Let's just get rid of that unnamed.ext file. Okay. So we got a device, um, and the device extracts as a sub-circuit, much like the FETs do in this technology uh, setup. And this is a cap mim m3 underscore 1, and it's got parameters L and W. So it's got a length and a width, and those are both 1 micron. So we, we drew our mim cap layer, 1 micron by 1 micron, and we got length and width 1 micron by 1 micron. So uh, unfortunately in this, you're not dealing directly with the capacitance, you're dealing with the length and the width. Um, but um, roughly two femtofarads per square micron. So um, you can use that to uh, determine the geometry of your capacitor plates. Um, and so let's make a schematic that should correspond to this. 
So an X scheme, we're going to we're going to need to find the uh, device symbol. And unfortunately, it's not in the devices library and the MadVLSI library. It's going to be in the Skywater uh, directory. So if we go up to the home directory and into Skywater, there's an X scheme Sky 130. Let me go back up one one level. So we have X scheme Sky 130, and then we have Sky 130 FDPR, and here we have cap mim m3 underscore one dot sim, and so that is the symbol that we want. Now, uh, something to note about this is a polarized capacitor symbol. Okay, so C0, this is the top plate, and uh, this curved plate is the bottom plate. So um, this is a linear capacitor, and it's not polarized in the same sense that an electrolytic cap or a tantalum capacitor would be polarized. It's actually a nonpolar cap. Um, but there is a difference in the plates, and that is that there is a parasitic to the substrate, um, so metal 3 is the bottom plate of the capacitor, and there is a parasitic capacitance to the substrate. It is actually probably not very big. Uh, we'd have to look at the parasitic capacitance table in the readthedocs.io uh, website to find out exactly what it is. But I suspect it's actually maybe only a few percent uh, of the area capacitance of the MIM capacitor. And so... Um, that's one of the reasons that it's up higher up in the layer stack up, um, you know. Uh, so anyway, this is the this is the capacitor we want, and if we right click on it, we can see that we can set the width and the length and um, the parameters here. I am assuming are in microns, and um, and this is really all we need to do. So the default is one by one, so conveniently this was one by one. And so uh, we should be able to maybe put some net labels on here. Um, so we'll go to the libs device and get lab on a lab pin. And uh, can label this bot and label this top you can save this so let's save it as and we can call this um, MCAP two underscore X scheme and let's generate a net list. You can view the net list. There's a net list. So we have XC1 top bot matching model name, width and length parameters match here. And so we should be able to save this as, uh, let's see, documents, mcaptute, and we'll just save this with that name. And let's just see if LVS will cooperate and match these two netlists. Okay, well, it uh, does appear to work, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, now, a uh, couple of things. If you're 
interested in laying out, let's say, two capacitors, um, one thing you can do is you can have them share a bottom plate. So if I come back over here to the magic and layout and I say extend this metal three out here and I wanted to make another one by one capacitor here. So this has to be, spacing actually has to be 17. All right, so there's, there's the minimum distance I can place two MCAP plates apart from each other. And so I can copy this, let's say this contact here. Over to here. And make another metal for tap here. And I don't know, label this uh, top two, let's say. Uh, label top two, top one, south and middle four. There's my label. <coughs> so we'll save this and then extract. to spice and let's see what we got so here we have two of these uh, mim caps and uh, they both share a bottom plate and they both have bot here is the net that was extracted for the bottom plate and they each have their own independent top plate. They are both one micron by one micron. And so if we wanted to create a schematic that corresponds to that, we could copy this. Like so. And we could write, uh, we could wire, let's say these bottom plates together. And we can copy this label over here and call this top one. Generate the net list. Here we have our two devices with the shared bottom plate. And so we can save this into our MCAP2 directory. Yes, overwrite the existing file. And we can do the same LVS. Yay, verily. Circuits match uniquely. Okay, so there you have um, just a simple example of uh, two minimum size MIM caps. Um, they would each be two femtofarads. That's really probably too small a capacitance to be of any practical use. Um, but if we wanted to design, let's say, a, um, oh, I don't know, a one picofarad capacitor, right, the way that we might go about doing that 
is to uh, think about how many square microns we need. At two femtofarads per square micron, we would need 500 square microns. And then we have to decide what kind of rectangle aspect ratio we would like, um, probably something square-ish. So we could make it uh, 20 by 25. That would give us 500 square microns. And so, um, I don't know, I'm going to just hose this uh, second capacitor plate here and just draw this right over top here. There's 24 by 16-ish. I'm getting the ballpark. So let's paint in cap here. So this is 24 by 9 by 19.55. All right, so uh, we need to make this too wide. So that's uh, probably going to be the width that we want. Yep, and so we need uh, another 0.9 microns to get to 20 on the top. Twenty point four five. Hmm. Point four five. Oh, that's point four five.
All right, now I've got to shave 50 nanometers off the top. top. That's 20 microns high. And so now we got a surrounded by metal three. And that actually is our capacitor. So that's a one picofarad capacitor. Now we probably would make a bigger contact and we probably maybe put the contact to the top plate somewhere more in the middle or something like that. Um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but if we were to extract and do X to spice. Here we have uh, basically 20, 20 microns long and 25 microns wide. And you can actually see here the parasitic to the substrate is only uh, 9.97 9 femtofarads. So I didn't bother turning off of the turning off the um, parasitic capacitance extraction. You can see that um, the bottom plate capacitance is only uh, 10 femtofarads. So this is supposed to be one picofarad capacitance, and that uh, 10 femtofarad capacitance to the substrate. Um, represents a, um, if I can do the math in my head here, that's a 1% parasitic. Uh, so that's actually not bad. In the old days when we used to use the half micron uh, Moses process, uh, the parasitic underneath the double poly capacitance was about 10% of the area capacitance between poly 1 and poly 2. And so this is only a 1% parasitic capacitance to the substrate. So that's actually pretty good. I wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over that, uh, generally speaking. Um, anyway, just for scale, I thought it would be fun to um, instance the current mirror diffamp cell. So I copied that into this directory from our earlier tutorial video. So if I do colon get cell cm diffamp you can see how big the one picofarad capacitance is relative to this uh, relatively large um, differential amplifier circuit with a bunch of you know transistor strips. So it's like actually probably about 50% larger than this whole amplifier. So capacitors are fairly big. Um, and a one picofarad capacitor is not necessarily the biggest capacitance you might need to use. Um, typical capacitances on an integrated circuit tend to run in the, let's say, 100 femtofarad or a couple hundred femtofarad up to maybe a couple of tens of picofarads. Um, you can do a 100 picofarad capacitor on chip. It gets to be a very large landmark. Um, Nanofarads are just out unless you want to spend the entire chip area on a nanofarad capacitor. Of course, you can stack up uh, the MIMCAP and the MIMCAP2 on top of each other, supposedly, and get uh, twice the capacitance per unit area. Um, but um, I'm not quite sure uh, exactly how that will extract. I've not tried it. Um, the MIMCAP, the minimum size MIMCAP2 is uh, a little bit larger. Um, the uh, MIMCAP2 
extracts is a device called capmim m3 underscore 2. Um, so uh, that's just something to be aware of. Um, and I'm sure there's a corresponding symbol um, in that uh, X scheme Sky130 directory inside the Skywater uh, PDK directory. So I will update the uh, design rule cheat sheet, um, but the um, the basics are um, that the minimum width for the MIMCAP layer is 20, which is a 1 micron, and um, the minimum surround by metal 3 of the MIMCAP layer is 3, and the minimum spacing between two MIMCAP um, rectangles is 17, and um, for the MIMCAP contact, the minimum width of that contact uh, is 7. And then the minimum surround by MIMCAP is uh, 2. So you have to surround the MIMCAP contact by MIMCAP uh, by 2 grid units. And the minimum surround by metal 4 is 1. Um, so I will, like I said, update the design rule cheat sheet. You can download that. Um, but that's that's it for now. I uh, hope it was helpful, and um, we'll see you next time.